Hi, I think it's time for an update of what I've been going through in my beating cancer journey. I know it's been a minute and I apologize for that. I actually had a few friends actually ask me, hey, how things going? I went to your YouTube channel. I haven't seen any updates. Just want to make sure everything's going good. And like, actually, I, I apologize for that. I actually don't think about, you know, having cancer every day. And it's just, I've been very fortunate that I've just maintained being busy and just living the best life I can possibly live. But I do have some updates, so I thought I'd share that with you. So just a recap, I have finished going through six weeks of daily radiation. So it was radiation for six weeks, Monday through Friday, which was about 10 minutes. And then I was taking two, I was taking chemo pills twice a day, in the morning and at night, actually every 12 hours, Monday through Friday. And the doctor just kind of explained to me that the radiation would be doing about 80% of the lifting and the chemo pills would do about 20%. So it didn't make sense to take chemo pills when I wasn't going through radiation like on the weekends. Anyway, after the six weeks of radiation, I had a four week break. And during that four week break, I actually had a great family vacation in California. So that was really much needed. It was very enjoyable. And then I did follow up with my doctor and I did some CT scans and MRI scans. And what they said was that the tumor has significantly shrunk. They didn't have the exact dimensions when I was in there. I'm actually having an appointment coming up this week and maybe I'll have exact dimensions then. But at the time that the tumor was discovered, it was about half the size of a ping pong ball. Right, it, it, it's, it's spherical, so it's about half the size of a ping pong ball. They told me it's significantly smaller. I'm just going to say they shrunk it in half. Maybe it was better than that. But I'll just say they shrunk it in half. So it's maybe about the a quarter the size of a ping pong ball, I guess. Maybe the size of an olive, a grape, I don't know. A big blueberry? I don't know. Anyway, maybe it's around that size. So I'm feeling very optimistic. And they decided we we're going to go through chemotherapy now. And my wife said, well, if it's, if it's significantly shrunk and it's, and it's not so low, can we just do surgery now? And the doctor said, well, we have discovered that if we do the radiation to shrink it down, and then we do the chemotherapy to manipulate and kill the cells, the cancer cells, then do the surgery, there's a better chance of it not returning. And I said, that makes sense. We're going to manipulate and, and destroy these cancer cells so they don't grow back. So that's the route we're taking. The chemotherapy will be eight treatments, and they'll be done every two weeks. So I already did my first treatment of chemotherapy. I'll talk about that. And then I have seven more treatments, one, one treatment coming up. And what, what happened is, and maybe you can kind of see it in the video, is they gave me two scars. All right. So the main scar is maybe about an inch long. And it's on the right side of my upper chest here. And they just said they formed a little pocket to put a port in. So this is a port where they're going to plug in the chemotherapy. I kind of I kind of call it a, a USB port. Like when you plug a USB port into your computer, they're going to plug in the medicine into my body. And so there's a very small incision up in my jugular because what happens is they have a tube. From, from the large scar to the small scar, there is a, a tube there. And it's gonna, they're going to plug in the chemotherapy medication. It's going to run through there, down in my jugular, and into my body. And the whole treatment is 48 hours. 48 hours long. So I go to the hospital. And it's like a whole day process. I get lab work done. So they draw my blood. And they, you know, they do tests on it. They send it to the doctor. I go then... I'm just hanging out for an hour or so while they get the results over to the doctor. Then I have a doctor appointment. We look over my results. We talk about it. We talk about the best uh, cocktail, I guess you'll call it, of what medication they're going to give me for that uh, day. Then I have to wait a few hours. And then I go up into a room. 
And then they, they, they literally plug me in. They just kind of plug it right in there into that port. And it's under my skin. So under my skin, there is a uh, – you can feel a lump because that is the device that's under my skin. And it doesn't really hurt. And you can't really tell now in the video, but the whole right side of my chest – had a little bit of bruising, a little purple, a little blue, and then it went really yellow. The whole chest was yellow, like a yellow bruise. But it didn't really, it didn't hurt. I mean, if I push on it hard, it would hurt. But, you know, just kind of showering didn't really bother me or anything. And the medication, it's a slow drip over 48 hours. 48 hours. So I sit there at the doctor's office. When they plug me in, they kind of give me a little bit of anti-nausea medication, and then they give me some some of the chemotherapy, and I'm there for two hours. Then they remove that after the two hours, and then they plug it in a, another medication that will do a slow drip for 46 hours. So 48 hours total, two hours at the at the hospital, 46 hours at home. It just kind of plugs in, runs down into my shirt, and into a fanny pack. And the fanny pack is where there's a there's a device, and it's a heavy device. This is an uncomfortable fanny pack. I actually am am not. I am. I, I wear fanny packs. I'll say that. I wear fanny packs because I put my gun there. I usually carry a firearm in my fanny pack. So I have very small ones that I wear when I'm wearing like shorts, and then I have maybe a bigger one that I wear across my chest uh, for for a bigger gun. And so that's what I I'm not I'm not unfamiliar with fanny packs. But wearing it around my waist for medication, so it's a it's a big device. It looks like an old uh, Walkman. That's what it looks like. Like it's thick, like a Walkman. Remember those? You put cassettes in and listen to music. That's what it looks like. It looks like a, a thick, heavy Walkman, and then a and then basically like an IV bag of the medication that's in my fanny pack. They gave me this huge fanny pack that had the that had the hospital's logo on it. I'm like, I'm not wearing this thing. Like people are gonna. It's just, no. So I got my nice fanny pack. If you follow me on social media, you'll see it. And I, I just kind of put it in there. And I wear it for 46 hours, even during sleep. So I just kind of take off my fanny pack, put it next to me on the bed, and I just let it keep going for 46 hours. And even taking a shower, my wife helps me. She holds the bag outside of the shower. She holds it up for me. I have to put some, when I have it, when I have everything plugged in, I have to put, a, I put some saran wrap and waterproof tape around it so it doesn't get wet. Right now, if you're looking, it's it's got a they didn't they didn't stitch me up. They put this medical tape on there and they said don't don't peel it, don't rub it, just leave it alone. It will naturally start falling off. It just kind of helps bond the skin together from where we slice you open. And actually, the the medication they gave me, they actually told me you're going to be awake during the surgery. And it's only going to take like maybe thirty minutes. You're you're going to be awake. We are going to give you some uh, what's it called? You don't feel the pain, you know, pain medication. And we're going to, we're going to put that in an IV. It might make you drowsy. Some people do fall asleep from it, but it's not made to make you fall asleep, but you, you can fall asleep or you can just stay awake and you won't really feel anything. We'll just be here working on you. And I had to wake up at five in the morning to get ready and go to the hospital. So I actually was on four hours of sleep. So I actually ended up just taking a little nap. And I, I actually kind of woke up a couple times. I, I, I fell asleep. I woke up. I can kind of hear them working on me and talking. The doctors are talking. I just close my eyes and go back to sleep. And then I woke up when they were kind of patching me up. And they're like, all right, you're done. It only took about a half hour. And they even said taking it out later will be very quick. Anyway, again, it's <clears throat> I'm getting chemotherapy treatment every two weeks for eight treatments. So that's basically in four months. So in four months, I've got seven more treatments to go, and I'll be done with chemotherapy. They're going to redo my scans, CT scans, MRI scans, see where we're at. Hopefully, it's, I mean, they're, they're hoping it's shrunk to nothing. I'm not going to hold my hopes up for that. I mean, that'd be nice. That'd be nice if it's shrunk to nothing. But my, my the plan is it's going to shrink even significantly more, and we're going to kill the cancer cells. And I'm doing things to also just kind of naturally take care of it. I'm watching what I eat. I'm very picky about what I'm eating. I don't touch processed sugars. I'm not touching red meat. Uh, I've stayed away from mostly all meat. Just occasionally, if there's if someone makes me a meal and there's some chicken in it, I'll pick out the chicken. If I have a little piece during one of my bites, I'm not going to be fussy about it. Oh, well. 
but I, I mostly just eating seafood and plant-based items and it's been fine. I've, I've lost a significant amount of weight and just naturally I have not lost my any appetite from the radiation or chemotherapy. It's all been just being healthy, being smart with my decision. Who, who knew that dropping weight would be so easy by cutting out processed sugars and soda and donuts from my diet. Who, who knew, right? Maybe every health nutritionist and, and doctor knew. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I feel great. I feel fantastic. The doctors all feel optimistic. I'm feeling optimistic. Uh, it's a pain having this fanny pack with this medication because it kind of releases a sound every time it does a little pump. Every maybe, I don't know, 10 to 20 seconds, something like that. There's a little a noise of it just inserting a little bit of the medication in me. And that's kind of a noise, especially when I'm sleeping and it's right next to my head. Anyway, if that's what it takes, if it takes four months of chemotherapy to really kill these cancer cells, hey, I can I can do it. I can do it. Not a problem. That's how I think. I'm just thinking short term, it's going to take a little bit. And I've got plans. I've made plans for the end of my chemotherapy. I made plans for the end of my radiation. I went to California. I'm now making plans for the end of my chemotherapy. Guess where I'm going? I'm going back to California. Funny note, my wife, me and my wife went to a reggae concert. And she said, man, I just love reggae and, and the vibes and the just how relaxed it puts us. Wouldn't it be neat to go to a reggae concert on the beach? And I said, well, guess what? There is a reggae concert on the beach. It's going to be in San Diego. So we got tickets. Our We're taking our family. We're taking our oldest daughter and her boyfriend and our youngest daughter. We're all going to the concert. My brother is going to be joining us. My cousin will be joining us that lives in San Diego. We're going to the concert. Then the next day, my my two cousins are joining us and, and my family. We're going to Disneyland. They're going to change it for Halloween time. So we're going to Disneyland for Halloween. If you know me personally, you know the last two Christmases we've been to Disneyland for Christmas. We want to now do it for Halloween. It was actually our oldest daughter's idea. So we're doing that. We got tickets for the Oogie Boogie Bash. On the following day, we're making plans. I'm, I'm foreseeing the future. I renewed all my season tickets for college sports coming up. Football, basketball, volleyball, all, all the sports. I renewed all my tickets because I'm like, I'm going to live a long, long time. I'm going to enjoy life. And I hope you go and enjoy life. Thanks for watching.